Hello, this is Charles from Cedalino Photography, and let's get into some Neon Glow Photoshop Elements action by creating some crazy looking images with neon. Let's get started. First, I'm going to thank Elena over at Pexels. If you want to see her work, go check out pexels.com and look for Elena Darmel over there. Now, you want to use a photo that has some reflections to it. Right here, as you can see, we have this red glow, and I'm going to put this neon triangle, which you've probably seen on many Photoshop tutorials, but today we're going to do it in Photoshop Elements. Over here, you can see that there are some characters over there that I've placed over here on the side, and we are going to make those neon as well. So let's jump in, get started by removing all these layers and trashing them so that we can start off with a clean palette. I need you to go over and make sure that you are in the expert mode and not in quick or guided so that you can get all your tools. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that you have your layers palette visible. So at the bottom right here where you see layers, click on the layers palette to make sure that you have layers selected. Next, go over here to a transparent layer and create a new transparent layer. Click on the brush or B on your keyboard to be able to get to the brush tool. Select brush settings right here and change your hardness to 70. When you put your cursor on the picture right there, you can see the size of your neon tube. If you use the left bracket and right bracket, you can create a larger or smaller image. I like to use the smaller ones because those are a little bit more believable. The next thing we need to do is we need to select our brush colors. Select D on your keyboard. That is going to put the default colors. You can also click this black and white box right there and it'll put the default colors in there. Click the X key to make white your foreground color or you can click the double headed arrow right there. Once we have our brush color selected, I'm gonna click one time on the picture. I'm gonna hold my shift key down. I'm gonna put another one over here. And then I'm going to put another one over here. And then I'm going to go round it out and put it at the very beginning right here and click the last one. There we have our triangle that the face is going to pop through. The next thing we need to do is we need to duplicate a layer. We can do that by going to layer new, layer via copy, or we can just use the shortcut key command or control J to make a duplicate layer. Now turn the visibility layer off by clicking the eyeball right there and then click on the middle layer. We're going to add a Gaussian blur. Everybody loves a Gaussian blur. So let's go to filter, blur, and then go to Gaussian blur. Make sure that you have the preview set right there so you can see how much you're blurring the white area right there. And then I'm gonna start off, yours probably says 0.1 and I'm going to dial it to the right until we get some blurred image right here. You wanna have it a little bit bigger than your original white line that's right there. This is a little bit too transparent, so I'm going to dial it to the left to get it a little bit more opaque. Once we have a nice blurry image right there, we're gonna select OK. Now we need to Command J or Control J again, which is a duplicate layer, and you'll see that we have a little bit more opaqueness right there. It's going from transparent to opaque. It's a little bit more opaque. Now we need to hold the shift key down and click the layer below it so that both these layers turn blue. Then we're gonna click on the group layer right there. It's gonna turn that into a group. You can see if I click this down arrow, our two layers are installed right there. Then we're gonna click another transparent layer right there and then we're going to select a color on the face. Now, in order for this effect to look really great, the image needs to be a little bit darker, reflections are great, and some of these color casts are great. So I'm going to pick the eyedropper tool, I'm going to select the color that is on the face that would be reflecting the neon tubes, and then I'm going to fill that inside our transparent layer. You can go to Edit, Fill Layer, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Option or Alt and then click the Delete or the Backspace key. That will fill that layer with that red color that we picked from the face. Now we need to make a clipping mask by right-clicking on the second layer right here and go to Create Clipping Mask. 
Now we have our neon reflection, we just need the neon tube. We can see that tube by clicking on the visibility layer, and there we have it right there. Now if you're not satisfied with the amount of reflection that you have right along here in the redness, you can always click the down arrow, click on the top layer here, and then do another duplicate layer, which is Command or Control J, and that'll put a little bit more for reflection. Now if it's a little bit too much, you can always dial the di opacity down a little bit on one of your layers. And there we have it. We have our first object right there. Now in order to make this look three-dimensional, we're gonna have to go over here to the lasso tool, or we can use the wand. Now underneath the wand options right here, you go down to the tool palette, and you can go to quick selection right there. And we are going to drag a quick selection around the person right there, and we are going to create a selection of the person. Now try to do the, your best to do a good selection because what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase this area back here using a layer mask. Okay, now I have this girl selected right there. I want to hold the shift key down, click on the layer one, and then click on the very top layer and we're going to make a new group out of that one right there. And then we need to create a mask right there. And as you can see, the mask is opposite of what I want. It is actually erasing everything outside of the image of the person, so we're going to use the keyboard shortcut Command I. And as you can see, now the fluorescent neon type tube is behind her right there. But we need to put this one leg of this neon tube right here, we need to put it back. And we're gonna do that by clicking on our paintbrush or clicking B on your keyboard to make sure that we have our brush tool. Now in order to paint this, I am going to create a larger brush by using the right bracket key. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna hold the shift key down, and I'm gonna click over there, and it's going to return that area of our mask. And so now it looks like this is going around our subject right there. So that's the first part of this. The next part is we need to look and see about creating something that is reflecting in the eye. Obviously she's looking over here, but we want to put this reflective item over here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another transparent layer right here. I'm gonna hold the D key down so that it's gonna put our default colors right here in our layer palettes. Now I'm gonna hit the X key to make sure that white is in the foreground and black is in the background. Go back to the brush settings, make sure this is on 70% put the cursor on the screen and use the bracket keys to make it a little bit smaller. Now I'm gonna use another keyboard shortcut. You can also go to view and you can zoom in by using the zoom in option right there, but I'm just going to use the command or control and then plus and minus and what that's gonna do is it's going to make my image much bigger. Now here's a trick, if you hold down the space bar, it'll turn your cursor into a hand, and you can come over here and move the picture around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to create these letters right here in the reflection of the glasses. Now I need to make my brush a little bit smaller. As you can see, there's some weird characters that are on there, and it doesn't really matter where I put them, but I wanna make sure that I get the characters the way that it's reflecting in her glasses. So I'm gonna go here, and I'm going to paint with white, with something like that, and then there's like this little um, carrot symbol with a line through it that's underneath. So we have this line that's like that, and then we have this carrot symbol that's like this, something like that, and then we're gonna go hold the space bar down a little bit, and then we're gonna go down, and then underneath is like a little six image right here, and then underneath that, if I hold the space bar down, I'm gonna go under, there is a line, and then there is a C under that, so, now we have a line underneath here. I'm gonna hold the space bar down after it writes that. Move that up. 
and then we have this C symbol that's something like that. Now what I can do is I can hit Command or Control-0. That will take us back to the size. And then we can hit Command or Control-T. And what that will do is that will allow us to move this and then resize it. So I'm going to bring this way over here. And then I'm going to get close to the corner there. I'm going to move it a little bit right there. And then maybe I will make it just a tiny bit smaller. If you hold the command or control down, you can skew the corners a little bit right there if you want to skew those corners. And then when you're happy with what you have, click the green checkbox right there, and there we have it. Now the only problem is, is that's not the way it would look. We need to flip this image because it is a reflection in the sunglasses. We're going to go to image, we're going to go to rotate, and we are going to flip the layer horizontally right there. Do the Command T one more time, and then kind of put this right about there. Tick the green checkbox when you're done, and there we have it. Now we need to add the blue. As you can see in there, we have a little bit of a blue glow to this. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to do a Command J or a Control J to make a copy of that. We're going to turn the visibility layer off of that one. Click the layer underneath. Go to Filter, go to Gaussian Blur, just going to use the one from before. Do a Command or Control J to copy that layer again. Hold the Shift key down to this layer right there and group those layers together. Then pick something in the color picker right there on the foreground color. We're going to pick like a blue color over there because it's kind of a blue color. And then we are going to add a new transparent layer above that. We're going to hold down the Option or Alt key and hit Delete or Backspace to fill that with blue. We're going to right click on that layer. We're going to create a clipping mask right there. And that is going to create our blue glow. Then we're going to turn the visibility layer on right there. And there we have our neon glow. Now if you don't think that it's enough of a neon glow, you can hit the right arrow right here under the group three, and you can create a couple more layers of the blue glow by hitting Command or Control J. And as you can see, that increased the amount of blue glow that we have right there. And there we have it. Really, all you need to do for this method is be able to create a clipping mask and use the grouping method along with the Gaussian blur. If you haven't done so already, please give me a thumbs up and a like, and stay tuned for more Photoshop Elements videos.